Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and I can't believe I'm saying this, but Chelsea Football Club are champions of the world. I mean, that is, it's an amazing feat. I know a lot of people are going to be like, Ooh, it's a Mickey Mouse tournament. No, 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 no. Fuck off. You are just jealous, lads. How did Chelsea get into this competition in the first place? By winning the Champions League. And my, you know, a lot of people would suggest that the Champions League is the best competition uh, in club football, the biggest competition in club football, and I'd be inclined to agree with that. But the fact that Chelsea got into this competition as a result of winning the Champions League, I just think we have full reason to celebrate this. Chelsea 2, Palmeiras 1 in the Club World Cup final over in the United Arab Emirates, and it was not a great game. I mean, let's be honest, uh, and not a great performance by Chelsea by any means. However, it doesn't matter when Kai Havertz steps up once again to provide another massive win for Chelsea. There's not much room to complain, is there? Romelu Lukaku gave Chelsea the lead with a really, really good header, I have to say, right at the start of the second half. A uh, really good ball in by Callum hudson Adai. I think it's something we've been calling out for for a while for Callum hudson Adai. There's a little bit of end product at the end of those moves and at the end of those, you know, promising runs that he makes. It was a lovely lofted ball in and the power Lukaku gets on it. I know I've been giving Lukaku a lot of shit recently, as a lot of Chelsea fans have. W warranted. I, I don't care what anyone says, that, that criticism was definitely much warranted. And, you know, I don't think he's completely out of the woods yet for me. I know he's just scored a, a massive goal for us in the Club World Cup final, but when he comes back and becomes Chelsea's top scorer in the league or whatever for the, the second half of the season, then we can look at maybe forgiving, not forgetting, but forgiving um, Romelu Lukaku. But it was a massive goal to give Chelsea the lead. It was uh, a penalty then to equalise for Palmeiras. I think a harsh one. I actually think both penalties were harsh that were given in the game. Both very similar incidents. Cross from the right hand side, Thiago Silva his hand is in an, in an unnatural position unfortunately. The ball hits it 9 times out of 10. VAR is going to give that. Beautifully struck away to make it 1-1. And really the rest of the game was a whole lot and nothing. I think that goal really did uh, knock the stuff in our Chelsea. We had a good spell after the Lukaku goal. But really not an awful lot else to shout about um, going into extra time. And then it happened. Cesar Aspilicueta wins the penalty. It was a similar incident. Ball falls to him in the box, on the volley, and the Palmeiras defender's hand. It's in an unnatural position. It's like here. It's like this distance away from his body. He can't really do an awful lot about it, and in that sense, I feel for him. But the Chelsea players seemed fairly set on the fact that it was a penalty. I could tell by their appeals that it probably was going to be given. And i got to give huge kudos to Aspilicueta here, because... I thought he was going to take the penalty, personally, but it was just massive shithousery and mind games, if you like. You know, there was a big, long spell uh, between the penalty being given and the penalty being taken. And more often than not, the penalty taker picks up the ball immediately, and that's when the mind game starts, because you have players from the opposition coming over, chatting shit in their ear, trying to rile them up, trying to make them doubtful. And right up until the ball was given to Kai Havertz, I had no clue who was going to take the penalty. I thought Hakim Ziyech might take it. There was a long period where I actually thought Aspilicueta was going to take it himself, because he's actually taken penalties in shootouts before, and has more often than not stuck it away with absolute conviction. But Aspilicueta carried carries the ball under his arm as if he's going to take it for the longest time right up until the penalty's about to be taken until which he gives the ball to Kai Havertz and he sticks it away with the maximum coolness to provide another massive trophy for Chelsea. I don't care what anybody says about the Club World Cup being a Mickey Mouse tournament. Realistically, the sides that we faced and bet um, in the lead up to winning the Club World Cup, not bad sides at all. And you know, Chelsea were probably the better side in both of the games that we played. However, I've got to give huge credit to Al Hilal in the first game and Palmeiras in this game. They provided huge resistance to Chelsea. Did not make it easy for them at all. And it made victory that little bit sweeter. The fact that Chelsea had to work so hard for it. And you know, as I said, people are giving out about how hard Chelsea celebrated this. Like, people can just, people are always going to hate on Chelsea. Like, And I, I don't give a shit. Obviously, there was the, the comparison made by Craig Burley, actually, former Chelsea player Craig Burley, that, oh, Man City have gone 16 points clear while Chelsea are off celebrating the Mickey Bowes tournament. Come on, you got to celebrate the wins when they come. Chelsea should be challenging for the title. They should be up there with Manchester City. But realistically, our form at the start of January and the whole way through December was not good enough. And as a result of that, Chelsea dropped out of the title race. Like Chelsea have now won two trophies this season, the UEFA Super Cup and the Club World Cup. And people are giving out about it. Like, you're, you're always going to get that. Piers Morgan, especially, chatting some amount of shit on Twitter. Oh, man. It's just so funny. He's like, oh, Chelsea celebrating this Mickey Mouse tournament while, you know, they're not even the biggest club in their city. Obviously referring to Arsenal being the biggest club in London, which... <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, man. Let it go. Arsenal are so far away from being the biggest club in London. Chelsea are so far clear. It's actually not even funny. And the fact that he's coming out and saying this just shows how delusional he really is. It's just it's just really funny, I have to say. But, you know, I think the biggest point to take away uh, from Chelsea winning this competition, Cesar Aspilicueta. He's been at the club now for 10 years and he's now completed club football as far as his Chelsea career is concerned. He's now won at least every single trophy there is to be won. The man, I don't think there's anybody that deserves it more. I mean, this man has showed nothing but professionalism and love and loyalty towards the club for the last 10 years. He's been a terrific captain as well. And there's talks and rumours here and there that he might leave for Barcelona in the summer. If he does, I hope he doesn't. I hope he does sign on for another year. If he is to leave at the end of the summer, it's not as if he's in all struggling for game time. There's talks that he might want um, another challenge, a new challenge in Barcelona would certainly be a challenge for him. Having already completed life at Chelsea, if he was to move on in the summer, um, I think he can go with his hel head held high. He's been a terrific captain, a terrific professional, and I've nothing but love and gratitude for the man. Cesar Aspilicueta, take a bow, son. As for the match winner, Kai Havertz, he does it once again. He provided Chelsea with one of the biggest moments and biggest goals in the club's history um, back in May of last year when he scored that goal against Manchester City. And he's done it once again. The coolness and composure. He was probably one of Chelsea's best players in the game as well but you know he has struggled for game time this season between a little bit of rustiness out of form uh, injuries and illness here and there I would love to see Kai Havertz given a chance um, and a good run of games in the team between now and the end of the season to see what he can really do he's already provided two massive moments in the history of Chelsea Football Club and the lad's only 22 like his ceiling is ridiculously high and again it's another testament to Thomas Tuchel and the terrific job he's done as Chelsea Football Club manager in just over a year he's provided us with a Champions League a Super Cup and now the Club World Cup we're going to have that little symbol on our uh, jersey for the next year it's going to be absolutely beautiful to see and I just hope that Chelsea end February with another trophy under our belts I hope we can manage to beat Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final on February 27 that would just be absolutely glorious I know Chelsea are well out of the league this season but there's still plenty to play for a good run in the Champions League we've just won the Club World Cup we are world champions can we win the Carabao Cup in a week's time lads I'm buzzing right now I have to say I'm buzzing the team may not be playing the best at the minute but there does seem to be that togetherness is starting to return the the, the togetherness that I felt was probably lost during the, the month of December especially during the whole Lukaku bullshit but I couldn't be happier with Chelsea being world champions lads leave a like on the video if you did enjoy subscribe if you're new let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments section down below also leave me your predictions for the Carabao Cup final in a couple of weeks time I am buzzing for that and uh, I'll catch you next time good luck